Amazon dropped their very own IDE called Kiro, and its main purpose is to integrate spec-driven development to Vibe coding. In today's video, I'll show you how to use Kiro and see if it's worth using. But first, what is spec-driven development? Like, what is this? Spec-driven development solves one of the biggest issues of Vibe coding, and that is AI hallucinating or misinterpreting the context. And when you, for example, implement a new feature with Vibe coding, it's quite difficult to keep track of all of the decisions that were made along the way. So by using spec driven development, tools like Kiro can work alongside developers to define requirements, system designs, and tasks to be implemented before writing any code. So this approach can save you hours and many back and forths with LMs. So with all that being said, let me show you what is Kiro. As soon as you open this app, you'll get this very familiar interface and that is because this is a fork of VS Code, just like Cursor except by default, it's using a purple theme, <laughs> duh. But seriously though, the main difference is that here you'll see this let's build section and we have two modes, vibe and spec. Vibe is what we have today. This is great when you just want to vibe code without any requirements. Whereas spec, it's the opposite of vibe coding. Kiro will help you turn your prompt into three parts or documents, the requirements, the design, and the task. I will show you all those later on in this video. Now, I wanna mention that this is great because it makes your prompt more structured and detailed. And because of that, the agents will less likely hallucinate. Below this, you'll find your text box or your prompt box where you can type your prompts. And this is also where you can add contacts and images to give more context to your prompts. And then on the right, you can change your models. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that Kira only lets you use two models. Cloud Sonnet 4 and 4.5. So if you're looking for other agents or models like GPT-5 Codex, sadly, you won't see it here. Anyway, you'll also find this Kiro tab where you can find the following panels, the specs made for this project, agent hooks to automate repetitive tasks when an event is triggered, and agent steering to guide agent behaviors and responses, and lastly, MCP servers where you can add or use external tools. We'll get back to the hooks and agent steering later on in this video. So with that said, let's start building a spec. I'll be using the following prompt to create a login page using ShadCN to access a dashboard for my CMS application. I want the spec to be using Supabase and migration to create a new database table called admin, and that's where I'll create a new row for the admin account. Honestly, I can just use Superbase authentication, but I'd like to have a separate table just for demo purposes. Now, once you send this prompt, Kiro is going to create a spec and you'll see it here in the spec panel. This spec is going to have three markdowns. The first one is going to be the requirements. In this markdown, you'll see the requirements and the criteria or the acceptance criteria. For example, here, as an administrator, I want to log in with my credentials so that I can access the dashboard securely. And for that requirement, all of these criteria must be accepted. For example, the login interface shall display input fields for email and password. And also, when an administrator submits valid credentials, the admin dashboard system shall authenticate the user against the admin table etc. You can see that with just a single prompt, Kiro assumes user stores for the project. And once you are happy with the requirements, you can move on to the next phase and that's going to be the design phase. We can click this button right over here to move on and that should begin making the design markdown, which is again the step two of this whole process. We can also go back to the file explorer and here you'll find the spec folder and this is also where you'll find the markdown files that Kiro created. Let's just give Kiro a few seconds and that should begin writing the design markdown. And there we go, we have the design overview. The admin dashboard CMS is a React-based web application built with Bond Runtime, utilizing Shadzi and UI components, which is what this project is using. And then below this, you'll find the design architecture, the text stack this project needs to use. You can also find here the project structure, the components and the interfaces, the models and the schema, and most importantly, the process flow. Kiro and the AI model is going to use this as a reference so that they less hallucinate. You can see the tools like this, like Kiro can help you think through your application. This is good, especially if you're just designing the feature because Kiro or the design markdown can give you ideas. Like for example here, Kiro assumed that in the future, I may add a reset password or role-based access control 
etc. And once you have done reviewing the design, you can finally move on to the implementation phase. This is where Kiro finally starts building the task, or should I say, the to-do list. And as you can see, it creates this list of tasks that need to be done. Now, many people have mixed feelings about this. Some people think this is really good because they get a very detailed set of tasks. And some people don't like this because they think that Kiro is just over-engineering the feature. Like for example, Kiro is going to add tasks to your specs, even if you don't mention it. Like it assumes that it needs to be included. But like I said, if there are things that you don't like in the spec, you can easily remove them. So personally, I don't see any issues with that at all. Now, what I'm gonna do is let Kiro finish all this task and get back to you once it's all done. All right, so now it's done. And while I was waiting for Kiro, I have created a Superbase project and got the credentials. And now here is the result. It's using Shed CN, just like what it said in the specs. And I can just give this a try. And there you have it. The login is working just fine. And as you can see, it did follow the design. It made a dashboard, it made a sidebar, and it used Superbase. And it also went above and beyond and added loading states. And even a logout button, I didn't even mention that, but we have it. Now let's talk about agent steering. This lets you create markdown files that Kiro can use to understand your workspace or project. So you can tell Kiro that your project uses Bon instead of NPM. You can tell Kiro to stop using post CSS, etc. In short, you can use steering to guide Kiro. It's quite similar to Claude.md for Claude code. So with that said, you can create steerings by clicking the generate steering docs. What this will do is make Kiro analyze your project and make those markdown files based on your project architecture pattern, technology stack, etc. And now as you can see, we have this product and tech. Inside of this product markdown, you will learn about your project, like the core features, the key user flows, and so on. And in the tech file, obviously you will see what technology this project is using, what commands Kiro should use to build or to start a development server. Now moving on, let's talk about agent hooks. This lets you create automated tasks that run when something happens inside your project. For example, we can create a hook that updates the readme markdown file when we update our source code. Now, if you run this, Kiro is going to create a new hook, but you can also see here that it is finally using the steering documents. And there you go, the hook is created. We can test this by editing a file in our project. For example, in the app.tsx file, we can just create a simple comment or change. And if you just save this, Kiro is going to execute the hook. But in this change, I didn't make any functional impact. So Kiro is not going to update the readme file. But if I remove, for example, a route, this time Kiro is going to update the readme file because there is an impact, there is a functional impact. So that is agent hooks. You can think of it like web hooks. Now, the question is, is this worth using since technically you can do the same thing with other IDEs or code editors like Cursor? Well, right now, I personally don't see it worth using, especially right now since it is still in preview. And I gotta say, since the release of this, the only thing that changed is the model and the pricing. I tried it before and I tried it again after three months and I didn't really notice a difference. And with the release of Cursor 2.0, I would rather use Cursor and its model Composer 1 than Kiro and Claude Sonnet 4.5. In fact, I did get a lot of errors in this video and I had to use, I had no choice but to use Cursor and Composer to fix those issues. So yeah, there's my answer to that question. But you know what? Maybe someday Kira will change vibe coding forever. Now, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, please give this video a like and subscribe to Weekly Health for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>